Well, good morning. Good morning. Man, my mic on here, Raymond, so you can hear me. <clears throat> it's good to be back in the house of the Lord, and welcome to you, and we welcome everybody who will tune in by way of the front row, and I uh, encourage you to, you know, subscribe, tell your friends and neighbors, and get them to subscribe. We need as many as we can get. We don't make any money off of that. Uh, we just put the word out there, and uh, <clears throat> so we would appreciate it uh, if you'd subscribe, leave us a comment. Good or bad, doesn't matter, uh, either way, amen. And uh, this morning, I'm going to be in the book of uh, Matthew, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 24, page 1034, if you have an old Schofield Bible, um, and if you've been keeping up with uh, the news, um, Always something going on in the news make you kind of wonder what uh, what's really going on, you know. Uh, and we, you know, there's wars and rumors of wars. The the Bible says uh, that they would come. Uh, trouble in Ukraine and and uh, politics. Uh, mercy, there's just all kinds of stuff uh, uh, going on uh, in in the world. And uh, kind of what we want to preach about this morning is, you know, what, what are we to expect in the future? Amen. What do we think uh, may be coming uh, in the future? And uh, the world has certainly changed. It is not the same world, at least, uh, uh, that I grew up in, and probably some of you the same way. Brother Raymond, when I was a young fella, uh, <clears throat> we didn't have to lock our doors because we didn't worry about anybody, you know, breaking in or anything like that. But now, uh, if, you better lock your doors uh, and probably uh, keep a weapon handy too. Uh, you uh, you never know when when you uh, when you might need it. I read uh, the other day an article about uh, some lady. She was in her late 80s. I want to say 87 and. Uh, some guy broke in her house and, and she had, you know, called the police, tell them somebody was breaking in. They continued uh, to, to break in and they, they came in the house uh, and uh, she, uh, she kind of fixed the situation. She, uh, I think, worked them over a little bit, got, got her uh, weapon out and uh, uh, made the guy, you know, stop what he was doing. And then uh, he told her, uh, that he was hungry, hadn't had anything to eat, and she took the gun and said, okay, get on in there in the kitchen and sit down, and she made him sit down, and she fixed him a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and and uh, and, a, and something to drink, and she made him sit there, and he ate uh, while the police came. <laughs> uh, don't, uh, you know, don't mess with Grandma. <laughs> thought it was pretty funny, you know, she, uh, she took care of the situation. She said, you know, he, he thought he might have had somebody easy, but uh, not me, not me. <laughs> Different world, amen, than we, uh, than we uh, grew up in, uh, amen. All right, uh, Matthew chapter 24, uh, let's start at uh, verse 27, for as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth uh, even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they sh uh, shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this uh, day that you've given us this place that you've given us to come. Pray, Lord, that you might bless the word now. May it find a lodging place in our hearts and 
I pray that you would bless these that have come in attendance today, those that will view by way of the front row. I pray that you would reach out to their hearts. Uh, if there's any that's lost, we pray that you would speak to them, that they may be saved before it's too late. Uh, be with that one that's cold and indifferent, and draw them in Christ's name. For his sake we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, these uh, words here, you know, if you're not saved, be very dis uh, uh, disturbing. But notice what he said. Now, he said, uh, verse 29, uh, this uh, occurs immediately after the tribulation. The sun's darkened, the moon shall not give her light, the stars of heaven uh, shall fall, the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Uh, and so, you know, this is going to be uh, a great event. Uh, and if you read about the tribulation, you will find that there are a lot of things that will occur during that period. Of course, the Antichrist will have come. Uh, establish a one world government uh, and rule the world. And honestly, uh, I, I believe we are headed in that direction. Uh, I, I don't know who the Antichrist is. I, I'm not anticipating on knowing who he is uh, or seeing him because uh, the rapture will take place and we'll be taken out of here. You say, well, what's he talking about? God gathering his elect from the four winds. Well, he's talking about people that will be saved during the tribulation period, there will be people that will be saved during that period. In fact, I believe uh, probably there will be more people saved during that period than there has been uh, in any other period across uh, 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 history. But, uh, you know, uh, notwithstanding that, uh, there's going to be a lot of death, a lot of destruction uh, in that day. It's going to be a time when you'll, uh, people that uh, are living in that era, I will have a choice to make, and the choice will be uh, literally one of life or death. If you choose to reject the Antichrist and, and live uh, in hope of the return of the Lord, then you're going to be sought and persecuted, and uh, they'll try to find you out uh, and kill you if they can, and they will kill a lot of people. The destruction that we've seen in the world uh, uh, across the preceding decades uh, uh, will uh, be just a drop in the hat as to what's going to occur during this period. But a lot of folks don't believe this. They, they, uh, they think this uh, is, uh, you know, a fairy tale uh, 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 or that, you know, God was just trying to teach some lesson here. Uh, and uh, listen, some of these people, uh, I, I wrote some of this down uh, uh, just to give you an idea of what's going on in the way of religion uh, today, even among church leaders, uh, Dr. A. M. Ramsey, Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, was interviewed in a newspaper article. This has been some time ago, uh, but he said, "Quote: Heaven is not a place to which we humans in our present bodily state uh, go, nor is it a place for Christians only." Uh, those who have led a good life on earth but are themselves unable to believe in God uh, will not be barred from heaven. I expect to meet some present-day atheists there, uh, unquote. Uh, Mr. Ramsey also said uh, the Adam and Eve story must now be regarded as a parable because it contradicts what geology tells us of the origin of the world and what biology tells us of the evolution of the human race. Now, I would say Mr. Ramsey needs to find another job uh, because he certainly doesn't believe the word of God. Now, further, let me give you this. A clergyman in Toronto, uh, Canada, had this to say about the second coming of the Lord. He says, uh, quote, I do not believe in a literal second coming of Christ I think that too often theologians, even liberal or neo-Orthodox, try to read into traditional doctrines some meaning, when in fact the doctrines have no meaning for us today. For me, the notion of a physical return of Christ is theological mumbo-jumbo. And this clergyman is in the wrong profession. Uh, and it goes on. And it's not just the UK, and it's not just Canada. It's right here. I have an article somewhere at home that I cut out of the newspaper uh, several years ago uh, of a person 
uh, here in this area, in college, in this area, uh, and they wrote an article and placed it in the Greensboro News and Record uh, about uh, these issues uh, uh, and uh, the fact that they didn't believe there was such a place called hell and they didn't believe that the, the second coming was real uh, and all of that. Uh, listen, no matter what may take place on the socioeconomic platform or what may take place uh, in the religious platform, God's word uh, is and will remain forever true. Amen. And, uh, you know, if you don't believe it, then you do so at your own peril. We're living in a world of uncertainty. We don't know what's going to happen. And, and folks, uh, I think maybe some of the reason for this is, uh, you know, people don't like uh, uncertainty. Uh, they don't like the idea uh, that there is a coming judgment uh, uh, but uh, it, all they have to do is study the Word of God, and God has given us uh, a remedy for all of that. Amen. So what do we expect, you know, in the coming times? What can we expect in the future? One, uh, the Bible said uh, 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 in 2 Timothy chapter 3 that in the last days there will come perilous or dangerous times. And he goes on to tell us that men shall be lovers of their own selves, uh, heady, high-minded, uh, lovers of men, uh, you know, uh, more than lovers of God and so on. Uh, and so we can expect uh, sin to increase worldwide. Uh, every day we're inundated uh, with stories uh, about uh, sin in this world. I, I, I read just the other day uh, about a woman who... Uh, uh, was a prominent physician, uh, and uh, she evidently, uh, uh, for whatever reason, uh, decided to go in her house. She had a, uh, a large house, I think, uh, you know, over a million dollar house, and, and she decided to take a gun and go and, uh, and shoot her child uh, and then kill herself. Uh, you know, this is a, a, a great sin in the eyes of God, and this is happening all too often uh, we're seeing these things. And it used to be you would hear these things and it would be men, but more and more we are seeing women uh, involved in these kind of things. What is it? It's the influence of the devil. It's the influence uh, of sin. It's becoming uh, 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 more pleasant, more socially acceptable to do what you want. In fact, uh, uh, people are arguing for uh, euthanasia and all these kind of things, you know. Uh, I, I read uh, uh, an article the other day about a woman who had some sort of disease uh, uh, that made her uh, physically unable to eat uh, a lot, uh, and uh, she was really thin, uh, and she'd had problems all of her life, uh, and, and for a number of years, and so she has decided uh, that she is going to uh, uh, terminate her life and, and apply for euthanasia, uh, and, you know, because uh, she's tired of living uh, this way. Now listen, uh, you know, I, I've got a daughter who's been uh, 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 that way, unable to eat uh, uh, certain kind of foods and, and uh, had trouble all of her life and uh, uh, she probably doesn't weigh 75 pounds and, and she hurts uh, all the time uh, uh, but uh, uh, she's never talked about uh, ending her life. Why? Because life is something God gave us uh, and beloved, uh, if he gives it, uh, it's up to him to take it away. It's not up to us, amen. But sin is becoming uh, more pleasant. It's becoming more public. Uh, uh, and now we're seeing more and more uh, nudity and all of this kind of stuff on, the, on TV. And, and they're making it so that it seems like it's the norm. And all of this uh, perversion that is in the world, uh, they're trying to normalize it and make it look like, oh, it's, uh, it's okay. It's normal. Well, it's not okay. Expect sin to increase worldwide. Sin is being committed by more people. Secondly, we can expect Christians to suffer as a witness for the Lord. The Bible said that uh, he that winneth souls is wise. And listen, if you try to witness for the Lord, uh, you are going to be persecuted. 
and you're going to be talked about and folks aren't going to like you uh, uh, because of your witness. I, I find it strange that you can say just about uh, uh, you know, anything that you want to uh, uh, about uh, you know, Christianity. You can say about anything that you want to against Christians or against God uh, and get away with it. Nobody will, uh, will criticize you for it. But if you say something against some of these other religions, then you can look for somebody to be coming after you. I mean, uh, you know, the, the Muslims, uh, uh, if you insult uh, Allah, uh, they'll kill you, you know. Uh, but uh, Christians are expected to, uh, you know, just bear with it and take it. Now, the, the Lord did say turn the other cheek, and I'm not suggesting that we go to violence. That's not what God wants us to do. I'm just saying uh, uh, that it's a different society that we're living in. I mean, uh, uh, beloved, when, uh, when I was coming along, even the people who weren't saved, they would not criticize uh, the the preacher or the people of the church or those people who were trying to live for God, uh, they wouldn't talk them down. They wouldn't run them down even though they weren't saved uh, uh, themselves. They held their tongue. But now it's the acceptable thing uh, uh, and, and we can expect people to suffer for their faith in the word of God. The Bible said all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Amen. We'll suffer for our fidelity uh, or our steadfastness in the word of God. Listen, uh, uh, beloved, uh, we were talking about this in the men's prayer room. Churches now are giving in to all of these uh, you know, social uh, uh, normalization techniques uh, where women want to be preachers and where uh, people who choose to live uh, uh, an alternate lifestyle want to be uh, behind the pulpit and occupy the pulpit. Uh, uh, beloved, the Bible speaks against those things. Amen. Uh, you know, I, I know it's uh, a lot of folks think it's okay. Uh, and, and they, uh, you know, they think, you know, a woman can occupy the pulpit uh, uh, and, and uh, preach the gospel and all that. Uh, but according to the word of God, the Bible said a bishop must be the husband of one wife. Amen. Uh, and, uh, and so on. It, it's impossible. God uh, 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 dictated that it should be a man who preaches the gospel. Now, that doesn't mean women can't uh, uh, talk to people. That doesn't mean that women can't. Uh, teach to other women or teach the children. That doesn't mean that they can't do a work for the Lord. Uh, but uh, from the uh, perspective of leading the church uh, under Christ and occupying the pulpit, there is no place for a woman in the pulpit. I know that's unpopular, but it's the God's truth. There's no place uh, in the uh, pulpit for someone who lives a homosexual lifestyle. Amen. The Bible said it's an abomination unto God. I understand people uh, are into that. They like that, all that kind of stuff. I, I'm not the judge. All I can do is tell you what the Word of God said, and you'll have to talk to him about it one day, and you'll find out what he has to say. Amen. Listen, but you can expect Christians to suffer for their witness. Now, if you speak these things, like I've just said to you, uh, expect to be canceled, you know, or talked about, or have somebody to take up arms uh, against you. Listen, I didn't write it. I'm just preaching it. Amen. Expect the scriptures to be attacked by the word of God. The Bible said in 2 Timothy chapter 4 that in the last times they shall not endure sound doctrine. Amen. But they shall heap unto themselves teachers having itching ears. Tell us what we want to hear. We don't want that old bloody gospel. We don't want that stuff. Uh, oh, we like this part, but we don't like that part. Listen, uh, if you go down, uh, you know, I used to go down uh, to what we call the swimming hole in the New River, uh, you know, and uh, we used to go down there and swim a good place, uh, uh, and the river was pretty wide there. Uh, and we would jump in and have a good time. Uh, uh, but when you jumped in uh, uh, the river on this side, you were, you were just as much in the water uh, as you were if you were on that side. 
You know, you were in. It's either in or out. Uh, uh, you can't say, well, I, I like this part of the water and I don't like that part of the water. Uh, so I, I'm going to get in this part and, and I'm not going to get in that part. No, if you get in, you're in. Now, that's kind of the way God's word is. You either, you're either in or you're out. Amen. Uh, and uh, you say, well, I don't like it. Uh, uh, well, then pray about it and, and help God to, uh, and ask God to help you uh, learn not just to like it, but to love it, amen. Because let me assure you of this, uh, God is right and we are wrong, amen. Expect the scriptures to be attacked by the world, just as I showed you a second ago, amen. To change its meaning. You know, good is bad and bad is good. Hell is no longer relevant. Oh, but we want heaven. We like that idea of heaven. We like streets of gold and walls of jasper and gates of pearl. And, and we like all of that. And, and you will see uh, uh, on, uh, you know, uh, YouTube and places like this, uh, folks talking about, uh, you know, I died and I went to heaven and I talked to Jesus. Uh, don't you believe it? Amen. You say, you don't believe it? No. Because the Bible said in the last days, they would say he is here. He's in the secret chambers. He's in the desert. He's there. The Bible said, don't believe it. Amen. Uh, you know, when Jesus is coming again and when he's going to show himself to the world, uh, uh, it's in uh, for us that are saved in the rapture. And for those who uh, go through the tribulation, it'll be right here what I read to you in Matthew chapter 24. And they will see him coming with the sign of the Lord of great power. Amen. Uh, and, and so when somebody said, oh, I, uh, you know, I had a, a vision and I saw the Lord. And then you'll talk to somebody else, you say, what did he look like? Well, he had a beard, he had long hair, uh, he had this, he had that. And then somebody else say, I had a vision and I saw the Lord. What did he look like? Well, he had short hair uh, uh, and his beard was, was white. Or, or this one will say his beard was dark. Or, or, you know, how old did he look? Well, he looked to be uh, uh, about 30 years old or 35 years old. And, and uh, you know, uh, they're all, the, they're not uh, consistent. Amen. Uh, and so what do you say? Uh, uh, the, well, there's an old saying I used to say, uh, have, and you probably heard it before, uh, when in doubt, toss it out. Amen? Uh, and, and so uh, uh, the Bible said they'll say he's here, he's there, he's in the secret chambers, he's all this place. Listen, I, I had uh, I had the near-death experience, you know. I, I've been dead a couple times and brought back. Uh, and you say, what did you see? Uh, well, somebody asked me that one time, you know, when they uh, I, I died on the table and they uh, brought me back and that little old nurse jumped flat-footed up off of the ground onto the table and did uh, CPR and broke my ribs. And, and uh, you know, I, I mean, when I woke up, uh, I couldn't understand why my chest was hurting so bad. Man, I, I, I thought, uh, what has happened? My, I was hurting. It's because she broke my ribs, you know. And I didn't understand that until they, uh, they came and told me, well, you actually, uh, 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 well, the doctor said, uh, he, he brought the nurse along, and he said, uh, he said Charles, uh, we had an incident with you. I, I said, oh, yeah, what's that? He, uh, he said, well, your, your pulse got thready. And, and the nurse said, Phew. She said, Doc, his pulse didn't get thready. He died. He was dead, D-E-A-D, -E dead, <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, they asked me, uh, uh, did you see anything? I said, no, didn't see anything. I didn't see no white light. I didn't see no angels. I didn't see nothing. I didn't see heaven. I didn't see the uh, walls of Jasper and the gates of Pearl. I didn't see none of that. Uh, but I said, the good news is uh, I, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, feel no flames or, you know, uh, none of that either. You know, uh, I, I was just not there. And uh, they sort of laughed. I, and uh, I said, well, I, I'm glad uh, you did your job. And, and uh, she, said, uh, she said, she called me the next day to see how I was doing. The nurse did. She said, uh, Mr. Arnold, how are you doing? I said, I'm doing great. Uh, she said, you're doing great. Uh, she, uh, she said, I broke your ribs. I said, I know. They still hurt. I said, but I'm, uh, don't, don't, don't get it wrong. I, I'm alive. I said, honey, if it wasn't for you, my wife would be planning my funeral right now. And, and, and so I'm thanking you. I, I said, I thank you uh, 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 for doing what you had to do. And, and she was like relieved. She thought I was going to be angry at her. You know, I said, I'm not angry. I'm alive. 
I'm alive, amen. Uh, uh, is it worth a, a few broken ribs to be walking around? Well, sure it is. Break my leg if you have to, amen. Uh, uh, you know, like the old fellow said, uh, I, I'm ready to go to heaven, but I'm not looking for the next bus. You know, I don't want to get on board right now. Uh, listen, uh, expect uh, what? Satan to wage all out war. Amen. The Bible said in 1 Peter 5, 8, uh, that uh, Satan as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Amen. What's he going to do? Well, he's trying to destroy the sinner. Amen. He's trying to destroy the sinner because he wants them to die in their sin. How does he do this? Well, he tells them, uh, uh, wait, you know. Wait, uh, don't, don't uh, accept Christ now. Uh, you got to get things in order. You know, I've had folks tell me before, I, I, I want to get saved, preacher, but I'm just not ready right now. I got to, I got to wait. And I say, why you got to wait? Well, I got to, I got to get my life in order. I got to turn over a new leaf. I, I got to, uh, you know, get the courage up to stop this or to stop that. And, and I, I say, you know, you got it all wrong, you know. You can't do any of those things without God. Amen. And all you can do is put your faith and trust in the Lord, and he will help you eliminate those things. I knew a man several years ago who, uh, you know, he, he wasn't a, a drinker, a drunkard by any means, but, but he told me, uh, he said, you know, I used to like to uh, come home, and he said, if I worked and maybe I mowed the yard and got, you know, hot mowing the yard, I would come in, and he said, I like to go to the refrigerator and get a good cold beer, uh, and then he, he said, I'd go sit down and I'd drink my cold beer, and I enjoyed that. And he said, then uh, 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 somebody told him about the gospel, and he heard the gospel and he got under conviction. Uh, and he said, you know, I, I asked the Lord to save me. And, and I said, all right, what happened to the beer? He said, well, uh, you know, it was in the fridge, but I just uh, hadn't been drinking it. You know, he said it was in the fridge. And uh, after I got saved, it was like, uh, you know, I, I just, I can't drink it. I shouldn't, I shouldn't drink it. I didn't want it anymore. And, and he said it stayed in the fridge every time I'd open the refrigerator. Uh, there's that beer that I used to drink. And he said uh, uh, normally by now it would be gone, but it was still in there. And, and he said this went on for about two weeks. And one day I came home and, and he said, I decided, you know, it's time for me to do something about this. And he said, I popped the top on all of them and I poured them all down the sink. And there hadn't been another beer in my house since. And I said, that's the way it ought to work, brother. Amen. Uh, God will release you from those things. Amen. Uh, listen, God uh, uh, tells us the devil is trying to destroy the sinner by telling them, wait, not now. Or he is uh, telling them, uh, you know, uh, uh, you're better than that. There's nothing wrong with you. Uh, you're not a sinner. You're not such a bad guy. Uh, you know, when you get before God, uh, oh, he will uh, judge you accordingly and you'll be okay. Uh, you know, that's pride. That's pride. The Bible said the, there's the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life in this world. Uh, and, and Satan is waging war on the saints too. He's trying to discourage the saints. He's trying to tell them, you know, that all oh, Jesus is not coming. Look at the condition of the world. Uh, he really doesn't care about you and your problems. Uh, uh, and he's trying to discourage uh, uh, the saints everywhere. Uh, that's what we can expect. Uh, uh, what else can we expect? Well, you can expect the true saints to stay true to the word of God. Amen? Listen, as Brother Grover used to say, you know, he said sometimes he would get to the point where he felt like quitting uh, and, and then, uh, uh, you know, God would say, quit if you can, you know. Uh, and, and what? He never did quit. Why? Because uh, uh, God was in here. Amen. God was in here. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's what he told me when I went and asked him one time. I said, you know, I think God's calling me to preach. I've been struggling for this thing for a while, and, and it's uh, keeping me up at night. I can't sleep, and, and uh, I'm just struggling with it. Uh, and, and I said, what's your advice? You're my pastor. Uh, what's your advice? And he said, well, I'll tell you this. He said, uh, run as long as you can, you know. Just run as hard and as long as you can. And right before God kills you, you surrender. <laughs> and, and I started to kind of scratch my head, you know. 
and, and he, said, he said, because if it's real, if it's real, God will let you know uh, he won't let you go. Amen. And he was right. He was right. Uh, good advice. Amen. And, and the saints will stay true to the word of God. Amen. I, I don't care what uh, uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury said. Uh, uh, if he doesn't believe the word of God, I still believe the word of God. Amen. And then uh, uh, expect something else, you know, uh, 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 and that is uh, fewer sinners to be saved. Now, you say, well, preacher, I thought you said there's going to be a lot of people. Uh, uh, well, there will be, I think, during the tribulation. Uh, but uh, the period leading up to it, which is, uh, you know, where we are kind of right now, uh, uh, I think uh, it, it's going to be less and less. How long has it been since you saw somebody walk the aisle and give their heart to the Lord. You know, uh, God is still the same God. Salvation is still the same. Uh, the invitation is still open, and this altar is always open. Amen. Uh, uh, but folks uh, don't seem to be interested anymore. You know, got too many, uh, too many things going on, too much, uh, uh, you know, Xbox and PS4 and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And uh, I, I've never seen the like of it in, uh, you know, in my life of how, uh, you know, they've got things that, uh, that are distractions. And, and our, little, uh, our little folks, they're into it too. You know, uh, uh, that, uh, that Finn, he's three years old. And he can take a uh, he can take a phone and do things with it that I didn't know you could do on a phone. You know, and he's three. Uh, you know, and and, uh, and he goes home and and uh, uh, Cindy said he was over there the other day and they went in to do something and and he told his mom he said I want to play Xbox I want to play Minecraft. You know, and he would sit in there and you know, play that thing. Three years old. I, I'm like man. Uh, uh, what kind of world are we are, are we living in? Uh, but listen, uh, 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 sinners uh, have too many distractions today. Uh, and then uh, you know the 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 new birth is uh, used lightly today. The Bible said, uh, "Wide is the gate and broad is the way." Amen. But the way to heaven, uh, straight is the gate and narrow is the way, and few there be that find it. Amen. And so. Let me quit with this. What do we expect in the future? We can expect uh, the shout. Notice here, the Bible said in our text that Jesus would come and send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Uh, and the Bible said in the rapture that there would be trumpets, but it also said when he came that he would come with a shout. Amen. Why? Because he is gathering his jewels home. Amen. Uh, listen, the Bible said there would be a trumpet, uh, uh, there would be a shout, uh, and then there would be a transfer uh, from mortal to immortality. Amen. Then shall be brought to pass the saying, uh, death is swallowed up in victory. Amen. And the, the tempter will be left behind us. Amen. So what do we expect? Well, there's some good things in the future. Uh, but it's not going to all be easy. Let's stand to our feet and hope you got something out of the message. And we say to those that are listening, if your heart isn't in the right place, if it's not where it ought to be, if you're wandering from God, then you need to turn to the Lord because times are changing and we are swiftly going down the road uh, toward uh, these things. The Lord is coming. He's coming. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Uh, uh, come back. Beat us tonight, if you will. Uh, six o'clock uh, for the evening service, and uh, we'll try to get you out of here by seven o'clock so you can get home and uh, get prepared for the coming week. Uh, don't forget those folks on the prayer list. Remember uh, uh, those families that have lost a loved one and pray for all the sick. Uh, and as we pray, uh, Brother Wesley, would you dismiss us, please, sir?